Alright, so we're about to start Zelo is back versus Goblin Guide for the Season 6 Cup. Gonna go ahead and post the stream link. There we go. So this is Crab versus Lion. Uh, I also need to change the stream title here. Do that real quick. And let's also open the deck lists here so we can take a look at that. Okay, it looks like we're opening with a Matsu Berserker from Lion. Probably see this. Hmm, so this is an odd... Uh, it's kind of an awkward flip for Crab here. Um, you definitely want to play the Kaio Envoy. You don't really want to play the Vanguard Warrior without a good card to put the Fate on. Uh, Goblin Guide is going to pass first as well. Uh, let's see what is in the decks. The crab player is running Unicorn Splash. Um, let's see. Ooh, two spies at court. That's interesting. Um, I was just saying the other day we saw spies at court in a scorpion deck. I think crab and scorpion are like the two clans that Spies at Court are pretty good in. Uh, you don't see it a lot in Crab. Um, since we don't have a lot of deck space and we don't always win political conflicts. Oh yeah, it looks like uh, S. Ruman lost to Goblin Guide here, so hopefully Zelo can get some revenge. Uh, ooh, so we see Vanguard Warrior with one fate. So that makes sense. Um, there's nothing for him to put the fate on this round, so he's going to try and save it for next round. Maybe play the Kasada. Uh, he could also... Okay, rally to the cause. Um, I was going to say he could be baiting the province here. And I guess he... Yeah, I guess he could have been baiting it, because rally to the cause is just going to pretty much neutralize that conflict. Um... We actually see a defense, just in case there's a conflict character, and there is a conflict character. The Ageless Crone. So we'll see if he has any ornate fans. Nope, he's just going to pass. So yeah, I'm not... Of, I'm not a really big fan of defending with the Kai Envoy, um, unless he does have some conflict characters in his hand here. Uh, he's attacking onto the Toturi province. And that is Feast or Famine. So he's perfectly happy to find that. Currently he has no fate on his characters. And this is the Water Ring political water, so he's going to try to unbow his Kaio Envoy and get another military attack. And he attaches a fan to the Vanguard Warrior, so he's actually going to try and break this Feast or Famine. I'm not sure I like putting the fan on the Vanguard Warrior over just putting it on the Kaio Envoy earlier. If you put it... Hmm. Yeah, we see a Tattooed Wanderer, so... You're actually fine with that, trading the fan for the Tattooed Wanderer. Um, but I still would have maybe liked to see it on the Kaio Envoy instead, since you can put a fate on him so he'll last till next turn. Uh, we see a Court Games to honor the Vanguard Warrior. So 
So he's really pushing to break this Feast of Famine here and discard the Toturi. Uh, let me see. Okay, so the I just checked the Lion Player's deck, and he is running Charge as his Restricted List card. So that would make sense as why he's trying to break this province. He wants to discard that Toturi so he can't get charged in. And unless... Okay, so Lion has um, his own or, Ornate Fan. The Crab Player could be holding an Assassinate. He has, <laughs> he has another fan. So yeah, I can't say I'm a big. I don't want to make a pun here, but I can't. I can't say I'm a big fan of putting this much on the Vanguard Warrior. Uh, yeah, Kingsley in chat says breaking Tertiary has no relevance because I'm assuming he meant Lion could just charge the Spirit Caller and then use the ability. So yeah, um, I kind of have to disagree with spending this much to break it. Uh, he is going to get the break though. Because now if this Vanguard Warrior dies at the end of the turn, you just you spent two fans in a court games for... I mean you broke a province I guess? I don't know. Probably cares more not a, yeah, not a fan of the fans there. Uh, probably cares more about breaking Feast or Famine. That is a good point, since he has no fate on his characters currently. If he can get a free break on that now, that's always a good thing. Um, and I guess Lion did spend almost an equal number of cards. If he has Reprieve, this invest is actually very strong. Yes, I I do agree with that. If he does have a Reprieve here, then this is actually really good. Um, it will depend on whether he has that or not. Of course, the Lion player is Splashing Dragon and has three Let Go. So he could also be saving a Let Go for the Reprieve. And we see a Vengeful Oathkeeper. Um, so actually paying the fake cost for Vengeful Oathkeeper feels a little bit bad. Uh, but he is going to get to go in on a military attack here. Uh, political, sorry, he already did his military. And it got switched. And this is the Earth Ring. So the hand sizes are getting pretty low. Wow, playing Oathkeeper, yeah. Um, he really, I guess that was the only conflict character he had in his hand, and he really wanted to get that second conflict. Um, we do see a reprieve on the Vanguard Warrior, playing that before the Earth Ring has a chance to discard it, and the Earth Ring is going to hit the Mountain Does Not Fall. Um, Goblin Guide could have just top decked a let go if he didn't already have it though, so we'll see. Uh, Kai Envoy attacks with the Air Ring. Yeah, I guess between Air and Fire here, you might as well just go Air. Um, neither of those rings have a are going to have a huge impact on the current board state. Uh, air is probably a little bit better. They are going to tie Imperial Favor. Oh wait, Imperial Palace. So Zelo actually gets the favor. All you really want to do there is deny it from the lion though. Actually getting it for yourself is not a huge bonus. Uh, yeah, I don't think there are any cards in his deck that care about the favor. It is a plus one military though, so that's something. Error better here, that way fade on fire, yeah. Why risk a conflict character and keeper fate? Yeah, good time to join. Um, we are on turn two dynasty now. Yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, six political strength vanguard wire. You don't see that every day. And we see him by Hida Kasada, three fate. 
and we have two spirit callers on the other side. Spirit caller is pretty good here. Um, yeah, he plays one of his spirit callers. So Zelo might just pass here. Yeah, yeah, he does pass. It's either pass or play the Vanguard Warrior, or not Vanguard Warrior, here at Heat of Guardian. Um, callers and Keepers with Fate on Fire, nice for Lion, yeah. Yeah, this, the Spirit Caller is pretty good here. You have some good cards to pull already. Hmm. So this Lion deck is actually running two two copies of Route and two copies of Strength and Numbers. So a lot of the send home effects. Keepers make way of the crab tough to get off. Yeah, that's true. Although, oh wow, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Did he just play three spyglasses on Casada? <laughs> Uh, okay. Sure. I can't say I've ever seen that before, just playing three spyglasses on the same character in a row. Uh, Goblin does not play Cloud the Mind, that is correct. Goblin's attachments are one fine katana, three ornate fan. So he doesn't have to worry about this Kasada getting clouded here. Yeah, let's let's put a big brain in the chat there. The big and brain are capital, capital B's. Everything else is lowercase. Um, we see the Vanguard Warrior attacking Manicured Gardens, contesting the Water Ring. Uh, hmm. So Water Ring is interesting. I guess he's, I mean, he's just threatening to bow the Ageless Crone, I guess? Yeah, it is case sensitive. Yeah, I'm not sure on the water attack here. I I kind of disagree with it. Um, what were the bids this turn? Zero bid two because of the spy glasses. We have an ornate fan to prevent the break here. Uh, water ring, very bad here. IMO says Kingsley. Obvious play seems to be fire, take fate, and deny keeper. Usually bad versus lion, thanks to ready for battle. Yeah, um, I would have expected him to maybe attack with the Kasada first and then go water to stand Kasada up again so you get the extra spy glasses. Ah, uh, ooh. We see spies at court. So unfortunately, unfortunately, because the Ageless Crown is in the conflict, this is going to cost him one fate. But he is going to hit a Way of the Lion and a Vengeful Oathkeeper. So that's a pretty good hit from spies at court. Uh, of course, the watering not going to do anything. My Desire says classic three times spyglass in twelve cards. Yeah, that's a big brain play there. But yeah, um, I, I definitely disagree with going water there. He could have been afraid to go fire because of a potential assassinate. Um, but I'm not sure why you go water still. I feel like almost any other ring would have been better. See a tattooed wanderer. Uh, so, hmm, I was about to say he, he could have a mountain does not fall, but he spent his last fate, so he won't be able to play it now. Uh, he could also have an assassinate for this tattooed wanderer. I think if you do have the assassinate, this is definitely where you want to play it. Um... We're seeing a political fire attack.
does not defend the conflict. Yeah, that is feast or famine already broken. Uh, so he's not even going to try to stop that. He's just going to let that happen. Keeper initiate comes out. Angel's crown gets honored. So I think that implies that we're going to see a stand your ground to keep this Angel's crown for the next turn. Otherwise, you probably honor spirit caller. I don't know. Or honor the keeper. Ah, uh, yeah, that, yeah. Again, that is feast or famine broken. Okay, we see the triple spyglass going into manicured garden with the void ring. Kisada's ability is turned off now, since he lost that last conflict. Yeah, three Spyglass on a three fate Kisada, plus the Vanguard Warrior to put a fourth fate on him. Um, essentially just means Zelo is going to be able to bid one for the rest of the game and just keep drawing a ton of cards. And Crab has Imperial Palace, yeah. So, could draw three, let go next turn, that's true. Uh, the defense here, just to stop the honor loss. And then I expect we'll see the spirit caller go in on a military attack and call in Toturi. Um, he could do, I would, yeah, I would do double earth. He removes the fate from Tattooed Wonder. I mean, you could do double air and gain four honor, I guess, but yeah, do double earth. Um, yeah, if you go out at the palace, you risk finding shameful display and then potentially not being able to break it if your Toturi gets dishonored. Uh, he does go there and finds meditations, though, so he should be able to break this. Meditations gets used. Toturi comes in. Um, you're still tying favor this turn, I believe, so you don't really care too much about the palace going away, at least this turn. And if you really need to, you can rebuild it later. So that is going to break. We're going to see a double earth ring. Discards Finger of Jade and Watch Commander. Imperial Favor stays unclaimed, and we see a Stand Your Ground on the Ageless Crone. So Lion kind of has a bigger board at this point. So Karata District on a Broken Province probably isn't a big deal, since the Lion player has a total of four attachments, and has already played two. Uh, we see a Lion's Pride Brawler and a Gifted Tactician. Mia Satoshi is going to find a Storehouse. Um, no Keepers. That is unfortunate. Uh, 
Uh, so you might just play, you might play Heat of Guardian here, yeah. He's currently a plus four, plus four, if he uses his ability. Yeah, if Zelo gets a mountain this turn, that's definitely really big. This Lion's Pride Brawler will be kind of annoying with Goblin Guide going first, though, since Mia Satoshi is here. So we see bids 1 to 5, so Goblin Guide goes all the way down to 3 honor. It's a little bit dangerous, um, but he does have a very large board here. He can try to go for an air attack, probably. So I wonder if Goblin Guide has seen any let goes at this point. He hasn't played any. Could be saving it for a talisman if he has one. Um, we see the Lion's Pride Brawler and Ageless Crone going on an attack here. Putting the Ageless Crone in means that Zelo will not be able to play a Mountain Does Not Fall. What, what we might see here is just defending with the Guardian and Satoshi and then buffing Satoshi. Looks like that is what he's considering. So that will put him up to 9. 5 to 9. Now he can use his storehouse also. So if he wanted to bow Satoshi here, he would have to get up to 6 strength. So if he has a way of the lion, he could just do that. Um, although the stronghold could get used, but then Lion Stronghold also. Um, if he gets up to seven, he could also bow Casada. He does have to remember that Casada's ability is active, though. Well, he can't play a Legion of One because he has two characters in the conflict. And he also can't play Legion of One because he doesn't have it in his deck. Uh, he does have one Bonsai. And two more Way of the Lion. But yeah, Crone is here. He does have four Fate, but yeah. Uh, so if he wants to do any of that, he should use his Stronghold to cancel Casada's to eat Casada's cancel. Um, or alternatively, he could just give up this conflict and pass. Yeah, I think the crone being in this conflict is hurting Goblin Guide more than it's hurting Zelo.
still thinking. Yeah, Rally to the Cause is unfortunately a farmable province, but it did do its job um, negating that first attack that we saw in turn one. Uh, so Rally to the Cause being under the row. Oh, interesting. Uh, he's actually running Ancestral Lands over Defend the Wall. So I guess he always puts Rally to th in the row. Assassinate the Crone, then double wave the Lion, Balcasada. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... You're only saving one fate that way. You're, you're spending an Assassinate. And he has three honor, so he can't even do that. But... Yeah, you'd have to just double away the line or bonsai. Uh, yeah, so he uses the stronghold to get rid of Casada. Not a serious suggestion. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um. character. So strength in numbers is actually turned on here. He could strength in numbers Satoshi home. Uh, we do see a watch commander though, spending his last fate. So any cards the goblin guide plays now are going to cost him honor as well as fate if they are events. With Karata District here, I think only expensive double for shame wins this. Uh, does he have for shame? No, he does not have for shame. Yeah, I think he needs exactly the standard or strength in numbers to win this. Um, but again, that's going to cost him an extra fate and an honor. So that would be pretty costly. Yeah, and he does pass, so even though he used the stronghold, he doesn't want to play any cards now that Watch Commander is here. Um, Zelo is out of fate, though, so we'll have to see what he can do. I wonder if you attack here or if you just pass your conflict. You have no keepers in the discard. Um, winning on this military defense seems unlikely, so he might just go for an attack. Yeah, that looks like what he is doing. And he finds public forum, contesting the water ring. So yeah, if he wins the water ring, he can unbow Satoshi, which will be good. Spyglass to draw three cards. It is still unfortunate that he has no fate, though. We'll just attack. We'll attack just once, so can see what Lion does, yeah. Um, I think he probably do have to defend with at least like the keeper initiate so you don't lose an honor this watering could also bow the mm, that doesn't seem good yeah I think you just have to unbow Satoshi here
Yeah, if he doesn't defend either of these conflicts, he's losing two more honor, which is not good. So, better to unbow, yeah, agree. Goblin Guide passes. If Zelo has a rebuild here, he could rebuild favorable grounds to draw three cards off a of spyglass. Uh, we see a vengeful oathkeeper get played. So that, that's pretty good. That's going to allow him to keep... He'll, he'll probably keep the Vengeful Oathkeeper at home to defend against the political. Mm, maybe not. I guess he's just going to defend with the Spirit Caller. Yeah, you don't really need to use Spirit Caller, I guess. Um, although if he had a stand your ground in hand, keeping an honored general for next turn would have been nice. Um, so it looks like he's, ooh, we see a defense from Satoshi, actually. That's interesting. I wonder if he has a fine katana. Either way, though, the spirit collar can get used here. Um, I don't really like defending with Satoshi. I would have rather just used him to go on like an earth attack. Yeah, we see Honor General come in. Yeah, I mean, they're both good actions, but. Tsunari is just plus three, basically. The Honored General is plus eight, right? So, uh, we see a, a Bonsai. So, he is preventing the break. Yeah, I'm going to say again, though, I disagree with this defense. I think you just let him break here and then go back and break public forum ooh we see a let go on the watch commander that's gonna lose him an honor now it hurts a lot that he wasted stronghold yeah solid casada cancels either way yeah yeah for sure Uh, we do see a rebuild on favorable ground, so probably going to move Mia Satoshi home since this is breaking either way. Played the Watch Commander after the Stronghold use, yeah. Um, he couldn't break Public Forum, it would be Dishonored, Satoshi, oh yeah, Satoshi would have been Dishonored, that's true. Um, but yeah, I do agree that uh, Waiting to play Watch Commander until after he used the Stronghold to burn Casada was a really good play. You definitely want to do that. And he is going to dishonor Satoshi. Honor General. So Honor General leaving is going to get him an honor. Uh, he is going to lose an honor again now from this Satoshi attack. So the last face down province, fire, air, earth, is shameful display, I guess. No, it's pilgrimage. He's actually running pilgrimage. Interesting. 
Uh, either way, pretty lucky to dodge that province. Um, so we're seeing a void attack to remove the fate from the spirit collar here. It's it's pretty impressive, I think, that Lion still has 12 cards in hand after going that low on honor. Um, and we actually see a Tattooed Wanderer to prevent this honor loss as well. There's a Court Games to re-honor Satoshi. And another court games to dishonor him. So yeah, that's 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 all right. You would have liked to break that, but if you can't, then oh well. Um, most of Lion's board is going away this turn, and you're still keeping your Satoshi and your Kasada. There's a fate on the Earth Ring as well with Crab being first player. So if he can get a possibly a good Satoshi mill here and get some keepers out. Yeah, still eleven cards and no art of war. That's true. He has um he has Rally to the Cause under his stronghold, so no art of war in his deck. Um we see a Kasada duplicate, Borderlands Defender is good, Shrewd Yusuke is good, probably. I think you probably play the... Okay, he plays the Shrewd Yusuke. I was going to say play the Borderlands Defender, but that's fine as well. You probably want to attack with Spirit Caller, One Fate, Casada Dupe. If I were to guess, I would say maybe you want to attack with Casada first, or not not Casada, um, Satoshi, so that Lion's Pride Brawler can't bow him on Lion's attack. See if Lion passes here. If Lion passes, you can just go ahead and use Satoshi. If Lion plays one of these characters, then you just take the passing fate. Goblin Guide passes. So yeah, I would activate Satoshi now. And he finds a Satoshi dupe. I would probably discard the Borderlands Defender. Ooh, he discards a face down card and hits a Keeper Initiate. That's good luck. Wow, he actually... Is that the only Keeper Initiate he's milled? <laughs> yeah, somehow he's only... So, so yeah, that was actually the correct choice, discarding a face-down card, since he hasn't seen any Keeper Initiates. Um, yeah, I mean, you can say nice crab rolling, but 24 cards in the discard pile and only one Keeper Initiate is not ideal. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, we see a Haruma Skirmisher. So yeah, definitely going to try and go for a Earth Attack here. One Keeper is better than no Keepers. Figured there'd be at least one other Keeper, yeah. Yeah, he did two Satoshi Mills, and neither one of them discarded Keepers. It was only that one face-down card. Yeah, so one fate from the Earth Ring, Covert's Lion's Pride Brawler. 
Um, I might have actually co-rated the Tattooed Wanderer and Make Lions Fred Breller Defend. Uh, but it depends on what's in his hand and whether he thinks he can still win if he does that. Because you definitely want to win the conflict. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't need them, but... Uh, no Iron Mines either. Yeah, that's that's true. I don't think we've... Yeah, no Iron Mines. Um, yeah, he hasn't really needed the Iron Mines, though. So that's fine. It would have been nice to see an Iron Mine earlier, probably, for that Vanguard Warrior, but... So we have Military 4 defending with 2. A Master of the Spear gets played at home. So her ability you can only use while you're attacking, so he just plays her at home so she doesn't get discarded, I guess. Uh, we have a Watch Commander. So Public Forum is now breaking, and if he plays any more cards, he's going to lose some honor. Kisana defend, spear send home, fa rebuild favorable, net five cards. Yeah, we could see that. Um, or even just not rebuild favorable, just send him home and then attack with him later. Either way. We have only seen one rebuild from Crab. Doesn't Kisada want to attack the stronghold? Yeah, he probably does. Uh, that is assuming this breaks, which it looks like it will. Goblin Guide has passed. We see an assassination to discard Tattooed Wanderer. Interesting. So, he's doing that for just the one honor that he gains from this. haven't seen the strong pressure on both Stronghold Break and Dishonor in a while. Yeah, definitely. Um, after this province breaks, the Lion Stronghold will be open and he'll also be on two honor. I don't know what you can really do as Lion here to stop this, though. Um, this is military, yeah. If he has any Vengeful Oath Keepers in his hand, that would be good. How many have we seen? Oh, we've seen all three, never mind. Yeah, um... He definitely wants to have a charge here. He's going to weigh the crab the skirmish right now. That would be really strong. Um, even if he doesn't have way of the crab in his hand now, he could very easily draw one off of the shrewd Yasuki or the spyglasses. Discard strength and numbers at random. He is only running two way of the crab in his deck, which... Personally, I like the three-way of the crab, um, but some people only run two, that's fine. This would definitely be a really, really good spot to have it, though. So we'll see if he can pull one off of the Shrewd Yasuki or the Spyglass Draws.
He could also just be waiting for Goblin Guide to commit to a conflict before he plays it. So, waiting for Goblin Guide. I mean, you probably have to attack with the Lion's Pride Brawler, I would imagine. Just to force the Shrewd Yusuke to defend, and then you bow the Keeper Initiate. Yeah, Goblin Guide passes, so we'll see what conflict he wants to do here. Um, I would expect a Fire Conflict. to try and at least get that keeper and his shit out going into a face down province which is kind of scary um, he could still find manicured gardens or he could find shameful display so, hopefully for him he finds the manicured gardens. Oh, he's just going to pass his conflict opportunity. Okay. So he's going to wait and see what Zelo does first. Um, yeah. If there's a face-up province you can attack, like Rally to the Cause, then I think you definitely attack with Lion's Pride Brawler, but since there's a 50% chance of hitting Shameful here, I think passing the conflict might actually be correct. Um, we are seeing a stronghold attack now. This is going to be 8 strength, and if he flips it to military, it will be 9 strength with the favor. Um, you probably do air ring, maybe? Air avoid? No, he's doing water. Okay. So he's going to try and unbow Mia Satoshi to defend whatever conflict happens with the watch commander, I guess. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fine. I still might have gone air. Uh, we see the spy glasses get used. If he drew away the crab, I think he plays it now. Uh, we s we'll see who the defenders will be. This is strength 7. We also have to see if he uses Rally to the Cause. Oh, it's only 7 strength political. So yes, uh, flipping it to military would go up by 2 strength. We see a defense with skill 3, and a pass. Ooh, is this the way of the crab? I think it is. Yep. So, Master of the Spear gets crabbed. And Shrujisuki is going to get used. So yeah, I think it's really hard to see... Uh, Goblin Guide winning at this point. Um, he can't really draw any more cards because he's at 2 honor. And his stronghold is just going to get broken at some point if he doesn't 
so Imperial Storehouse gets used. We see a pass. Crab wins the conflict, and Watering is going to stand up Satoshi, who is currently at three three military. Uh, ooh, is another spies at court also. That is the second spies of court out of two. Finds stand your ground and ready for battle. So, not as good as the first one. Um, you'd need four spy glasses to see a win from Lion here, yeah. I mean, at this point, I think it's actually just too late. Even if he had four spy glasses in some weird scenario. But, yeah, Watering's going to ready me a Satoshi. And here comes the Lion's Pride Brawler. Just going to hope that he doesn't find Shameful Display. So, I mean, since you ended up attacking anyway, maybe you should have just attacked the first time instead of passing it. Um... That way you force the Shrujisuki to defend, and then you also can bow the Keeper Initiate. I don't know. Uh, he does find Manicured Gardens, though. Contesting the Fire Ring. So if he wins this somehow, he'll actually get Imperial Favor because of the Keeper Initiate. Um, and he does... He could potentially have Charge. Charge would be really good here. Uh, he uses the Stronghold to eat Kasada. Mia Satoshi can actually get bowed here if he doesn't play a card, and we do see a Talisman of the Sun, which might actually just be the game. Um, I mean, I think if you have charge, you probably still play it. Let's see, that would bring him up to nine. And then that would be five. Yeah, I think you just have to play it if you have it. Lion Spread Brawler gets used. Talisman gets used. Did he... Yeah, he did use Manicured Gardens, okay. For a second I was worried he forgot to use it. Um... I think maybe you wait for him to use Shameful here if you have the charge, and then play the charge. Although that does leave you open to a potential second Watch Commander on the Keeper Initiate. Which would prevent you from playing it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the, oh, yeah, he's already used all three watch commanders, never mind. He says, yeah, I'm not coming back from this, GG, okay, so that is going to be the game. Um, yeah, the problem with passing there is that then Zelo can just win the conflict and not use Shameful. So I think he would have had to play the charge if he had it. Yeah, the the Kasada with three spy glasses definitely was huge that game.
but yeah, just too much for a lion to come back from at that point. Um, I do kind of wonder what's in his hand. He still had two let goes left in the deck. He still had um, all three charge. He didn't see a single charge that game. Yeah, only one let go got used from Lion. No charges. How many ready for battle? Um, he runs three ready for battle. Which, yeah, is probably not a very good card in this matchup. Um, one of them got discarded from a spies at court. Yeah, with so much less fury, three ready for battle is probably a little bit much um, and like from what I've found if you're playing against a crab ready for battle is like pretty much a dead card because the only time they're really gonna value is like a water ring so not ideal in that matchup even back when fury was a thing But yeah, that is going to be another crab moving on to the round of 32. Let's see how many we have so far. I think four. Yeah, it looks like the fourth one. Uh, there's still three crab games in the round of 64 that haven't been played. Action Johnny, Elrathian, and Demabia. Not sure how to pronounce that one, but yeah, Crab doing pretty well this season. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, I think Crab definitely got a good boost from the restricted list. The fact that we are seeing a lot less of Miramoto's Fury and Policy Debate is pretty good for us. So I think Crab is going to be doing well for now. And from what I've been hearing about next cycle, it seems like we're going to be doing well in the future as well. So that's always good. But yeah, that's going to be it for this game. So I'm going to go ahead and end the stream there. Um, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next game.